Hi everyone, it's Tony Tonkin here from the Child Protection Party. We've got a very special session tonight where we're going to be talking with a couple of academics about a project that they're involved in, which relates to the care experiences of those people that have been under the guardianship of the minister and care of the state. This is a topic that is important to the Child Protection Party because it's not just about concern about kids and outcomes for kids, it's about the outcomes and the experiences that kids have as they become adults and they leave the care system. So tonight, or today, or whenever you're listening to this, I'd like to introduce to you our two guests, uh, Dr. Deirdre Michelle and Rosie Canning. How are you guys? Hi, well, thank you. Hello. Got a, just got a few things that uh, I would like to ask just to kick off uh, tonight, and that is um, if you could just do an introduction of each of you. And, if, and so we need to say that Rosie's in the UK, so she oh. has an accent. Um, whereas, of course, Deirdre and myself don't. Um, but but so, so we'll just kick off by, uh, Rosie, you can just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, an introduction so people know who you are. Hi, so I'm Rosie Canning. I'm not a doctor yet, but I'm hoping to be soon. I'm studying um, a PhD at the University of Southampton, and I'm looking at the... Uh, representations of orphans and care experience in literature. So I'll be talking a bit about the history of those representations um, going right back. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'll be looking at things like Jane Eyre and, and then coming forward. And I'll be focusing on contemporary um, fiction. So things like uh, My Name is Leon by Kit Duvall, um Alex Wheatle has written quite a few books about care experience. Um, his main, well, there's a couple of main ones actually, Brenton Brown and Brixton Rock. Um, I'll be looking at Sally's ba Sally Bailey's, um, uh, ah, D. Is it uh, Dove? Dove, my dove. Yeah. Yes. Dove. <laughs> Girl with Dove, is it? Girl with Dove. Girl with Thank Dove, you. yes, yes, yeah. yes, which is and an amazing story. Yeah, Jenny Fagan's The Panopticon. Um, and then I'll be looking at um, one novel that uh, portrays care experience in a very negative way. I think there's about seven care experience characters and they're all, um, they all seem to represent the, the, the stereotypes, um, uh, drug addicts, um, in and out of prison, um, homeless, thieves, murderers, etc. And um, that's a, I'm not even going to tell you what the name of the book is. <laughs> I'm so upset with it. Um, so, yeah, I'll be doing that. And I'm also doing a piece of creative writing, um, which will be, it will be influenced by my own experience leaving the care system back in the 70s. Um, but I'm hoping that um, it will it will still appeal to um, care experienced people, you know, that are leaving the care system today. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a we'll have a chat we'll have a chat in just a mo moment uh, about the archive and what that is all about, and hopefully get some people excited about getting involved with you too in that particular area. Um, but it's great to have you here, Rosie, and it's good to know that uh, we can communicate with you, even though I think it's early in the morning there and later at night here. But And we do appreciate you for getting out of bed and for not coming to this activity in your pyjamas. Um, and I just, so I'd just like to uh, welcome Dr. Deirdre Michelle, and she can tell you also a little bit about um, herself also. Okay, so my formal name is Deirdre, but most people call me D these days. That's my preferred name. And I'm an academic at the University of Adelaide, and in Adelaide, in South Australia, unsurprisingly. And what do I do there? I, um, I teach mostly in sociology and teach subjects in social research. And then another component of my work is to do research. And so with a colleague, Neil Musgrove, who's at the Australian Catholic University, we did a, a large project a few years ago around the history of foster care. 
in Australia and we chose foster care because we've noticed that we've had lots and lots of inquiries in Australia since the 1990s. But most of those were focused around children who grew up in um, or had spent considerable time in orphanages and children's homes, and there was very little on fo on foster care. So we decided to focus on foster care for that project, and that resulted in a book that we published in 2018. And Nell and I have teamed up again. We're just at the beginning of another project, and there we're looking at the history of activism around the care system in Australia. So those activists who um, who 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 agitated i guess for those inquiries those many many inquiries that we've had which have led to apologies um some redress and um perhaps some changes in in the formal system so that's the current project that i'm working on but as i said we're just at the beginning of that one and this one i'm working on with with rosie and like rosie i'm thrilled to be working with her on care experience and, and culture we've been talking about it for a while and now it's finally happening so that's fantastic and we're going to have a conversation just a moment as to what that means and what does that look like but i thought before we get to that point and you get into the nitty-gritty uh, of your project that you tell us about how how you both so you both have care experience that's oh, that's quite clear but how did you both get together yeah so i remember meeting rosie online it was on twitter i um I had a, I'd been on signed up to Twitter for a long time, but but wasn't very active until around 2018, I think. And then I noticed that there was this whole community of care experienced people um, in the UK, and Rosie was one of those. And and what I found out was there was a conference being organised in Liverpool um, in April 2019. Rosie will tell me if I've got that um, date wrong. Um, and Rosie was one of the organisers for that and we found that we had lots in common because we did have this shared interest in stories around people who'd been in foster care or children's homes or, or whatever and so we met online but then we met in London. <clears throat> yes, we uh, met at the very apt, I think, Foundling Museum and for those that don't know what the Foundling Museum is, it's... Um, well, it used to be a hospital and um, back in, oh, goodness me, I can't remember the date that it started, but we're talking um, 1800s. Right. Uh, okay, so we met at the Foundling Museum and um, uh, another person who was key to, I think, D&I's interest in orphans and care experience in literature was Lem Sisse, and he happened to have an exhibition on there um, and I'd been invited originally to the exhibition. I said to Dee, oh, it'd be a really good place to, to meet, and uh, you'll be able to see the exhibition as well, which featured um, many, many orphans in fiction um, that had been stenciled onto the wall in the cafe, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. Well, the, going back to what I was saying about the Foundling Museum, now... Um, oh, what's his name? Coram, and I can't remember his first name. Thomas, might, Thomas, might, Coram. To, Thomas Coram, yes. Um, he was very concerned about the amount of um, children that were just being left in the streets to fend for themselves. Um, and also, um, there were some people in society that uh, were concerned about mothers that were finding themselves pregnant and uh, not necessarily being able to keep those babies and so they had a system at the foundling hospital whereby mothers could come along and um, leave their babies not not every mother could leave their baby they had um, a system whereby uh, you would have a, a white ball and a black ball white ball I think meant that um, your baby would be accepted black ball uh, not I think there was a red ball as well but I can't I can't remember what that was for and um, and so over the years hundreds and hundreds of orphans lived at the foundling museum when they were babies they were sent out to uh, foster mothers um, to, to be looked after and then they were brought back and normally trained to go into service or the Navy um, and uh, as far as I know, uh, this is one of the places that doesn't seem to have 
the stigma of abuse attached to it. Um, it might be there somewhere, but as far as I know, um, the people that have written about the Foundling Museum seem to have, you know, had a, shall we say, an okay time. As okay as you can be not being with your family. Um, so, yeah, and now the Foundling uh, Museum are doing an amazing project. They're looking at care, the, their experience of care through the ages, and they are putting all their archives um, online. Uh, one of the things that I didn't mention was when the mothers would take the babies along to the uh, Foundling Hospital, they would leave some sort of um, uh, marker to, you know, to, uh, so that the people knew who the baby belonged to and they would be given um, a number. And then once the child was taken into the Foundling Hospital, they would be given a new name. Uh, but the records were kept and mothers would leave some rather beautiful tokens, you know, like um, a heart shaped shell, um, a coin. And they had lots and lots of mothers that left fabric. And consequently, it means that they've ended up with this massive archive of fabrics from the time that have all been um, kept in the archives and therefore now have, you know, um, immense historical interest. So they are working on putting all their archives online, um, as well as doing history of care and also working with um, young children that are still in care and doing some projects with them. And it looks at, I have to say, it does look absolutely fantastic uh, what they're doing. And they're very, very aware of, you know, um, including um, people with care experience by young people and letting those uh, young people to help. Just having, mm. just having a little bit with uh, trouble again with uh, Rosie's connection. <coughs> but, you know, and I certainly can't say it's because the UK just hasn't got their act together around broadband, but um, maybe they haven't. Uh, so what... <laughs> so, we were the I thought we were yeah, the we're worst. Supposed to be there. We're only 64th. We're 64th in the world when it comes to happy broadband. Uh, UK must be 65th. <laughs> Is that the issue? Uh, no, so... Uh, anyway, so, so I guess... I'll just sorry, finish Rosie, saying... Uh, Tony, yeah. I'll just finish saying because I... I, I, this is what I do. I tend to go down rabbit holes and I just went down a foundling museum rabbit hole. But Dee D and I and Tony met there um, just before the Care Experience Conference. And it was a, it was a lovely afternoon um, to meet in real life after having, you know, conversed so much online. And um, then we uh, met up again at the Care Experience Conference where Dee was chairing uh, the event that I was pre uh, presenting at with um, Kirsty Capes, whose um, uh, novel is due to be published in May. It's called Careless, brilliant title, and um, can't wait to read it. Um, yes, and then from there, Dee and I had lots of conversations, didn't we, Dee? And I don't think we stopped talking after that, Rosie. <laughs> um, yeah. I loved the idea of um, the Care Experience Conference because that was all run and organised by Care Experience people. So I, I loved that idea and it was a very welcoming, very, very fabulous time that I had. I really, really enjoyed it. And I had a, I had a sense that there was a bit more activism going on in the wider community within the UK. I might be wrong. Perhaps it's not like we don't have the activism here. We do. We absolutely do. Um, but I don't see it so much um, in the sort of general community as I, as I saw it in the UK. So, yeah, it was it was a really fantastic time. Great to meet you in person. Great that kind of them to say in a weird way brought us together. He'd been in Adelaide two days before I found out about him, funnily enough, so I missed him. I wrote to him. He said, that's a shame. I would have come and had coffee with you, um, and I loved his work. So, yeah, that was definitely a, a real starting point for us to not stop talking about care experience in fiction. Yeah. Yes, okay, absolutely. So let's, um, um, can we just, I just want to move it on to um, 
the, pr the project side of things, if, if that's okay. Um, so okay. I thought yeah, I'd absolutely. start with... I just thought I'd start with uh, what what do you what if you both could describe to us um, what is the, what is the project the nature of the project and possibly its intentional outcomes. Right. Well, I think maybe Rosie, with your librarian background, maybe that might be a good place to start. But we did t think about. We both had collections of books and films, and, and we were having this ongoing conversation about representations of care experienced people. And then we thought, and it is partly because Rosie is a librarian, so she's thinking with a librarian's mind. How can we get that organised so that we can encourage other people to come together and see? all these people and then we started thinking about care people who were writing the books whether they were care experienced or not and then we got to talking about actors and singers and other people who are care experienced and we wanted one place to pull them all together and talk about this idea of the influence I guess that care experience of people have had in our respective cultures over quite a long period of time. Yeah, well, I think we both came from a place where we were seeing negative portrayals of um, care ex people that have been in care. Um, I mean, the government, we've got government stats here, I'm guessing you have as well. And they, they tend to use um, a, a particular type of language, um, you know, not in education, um, in, in youth offending places and, and, and that sort of that sort of thing and I felt that the real story of care experienced people leaving care was very different to the way that it was often portrayed also um, crime dramas they really love to you know have somebody that's either adopted or who, who's been in care as the the serial killer the murderer you know um, and from my experience, people that I knew had uh, gone on to do some really quite interesting things, even if that's literally just getting married and raising their family in a really loving environment, um, which to me is, you know, that they are one of my superheroes, absolutely. Uh, is, um, how did this bring you to the project? Um, and how would you best okay. describe the project and its sort of potential outcomes. Yes, if I could just pick up from what Rosie was saying, we were both right. doing separate projects. So I, like Rosie, was uh, well over representations of um, people in care as being overrepresented in the prison system, in the mental ill health population, in the homeless population. And I had no intentions to dispute those figures, not, not at all. In fact, I was homeless when I first left care for a short time at least. So I didn't want to represent those figures, but we both had this interest in telling one story. If there's only one story that's ever told about kids in care, you end up with a stereotype of kids in care. And so I'd been running a project where I'd been telling other stories of people in care, people that I'd discovered who had quite prominent lives often, uh, but not exclusively. So, for example, the activist, um, African-American activist Malcolm X, he was in state care, he was in foster care, juvenile detention. He was even, he, he fitted those statistics because he was in prison too. But it's also a redemption story because he went on to become a very significant figure. So I started telling those stories, and Rosie was also all already had her, um, had a website where she was looking at orphan and care experience as a result of doing her PhD. So we came together on on that. So we had this background of. Um, wanting to change things but also a pool of knowledge around representations both of people and of um, uh, care experienced people in film and television shows and um, literature etc yeah actually that's just reminding me Dee that um, when I was involved with um, the Finchley Literary Festival um, I was an organizer for that um, and uh, as a uh, some Green Acre, uh, Green Acre writers, uh, writer groups that I ran. Um, when we had the festival, one of the things that I made sure of was that we had um, care experience writers attending. So it's sort of, it goes back even before my PhD um, 
that I was trying to um, get, you know, present a different story to the one that I had grown up with. And um, so I suppose it, it, it also grew from that. And, you know, the fact that people were very quietly getting on and writing their novels or their autobiographies or whatever, I thought was absolutely brilliant. Uh, people like Alex Wheatle and Paolo Hewitt, they were two people that came along to the festival um, and, uh, you know, told us about their lives and, and their writing. And although Alex Wheatle was was known then, I wouldn't say he was as well known as he's now become. Uh, you know, he's been awarded um, uh, the Guardian um, Award for Children's Fiction. Uh, his I mean, he's a prolific writer and uh, he's now writing for young adults. And those novels, the language that um, he uses is absolutely amazing and very funny as well, as well as being very poignant. Um, so he's, yeah. Um, so can I just ask, is, is your goal to, uh, to highlight the success of those people that are successful who have been in care? <clears throat> or is it to let people who are in care know that they also can be as successful? I think um, it's all of it's all of that. We wanted to tell the world, not just the care experience, about these amazing people that have come out of the care experience, despite, usually despite the system. Uh, the system can't take credit for it in most cases. But so despite the system, some people have done absolutely amazing things. Um, but as Rosie says, even if they've just kept their family together, that's amazing too. So, you know, um, we think they're really successful. But we also so did have this idea that you know if if care experience and, and young people will tell you that that what they hear is those negative stories all the time they know about the stigma so we certainly want to give them a different story multiple stories um, so that they can know that they can go out into the community and and challenge stigma and do what they want to do whether that is having their family or becoming some famous rock star or whatever it else it might so yeah, the, and I, the ob so, sorry, Rosie, but is the objective just to um, uh, to inform people about successful people, <coughs> or, mm. or is it to um, to inspire people as well? Okay, I think we need to not uh, focus too much on that word success because. Um, I think there's all, de you know, all sorts of definitions of success. And one of the things that um, Care Experience and Culture Archive are hoping to do is to find ways to include the ordinary person in not just the building of the archive, i.e. we want people to let us know um, if they know of a book or a film or an actor or a director who's um, got care experience. Um, but also we're, we're discussing ways that, um, you know, we can say uh, that all care experienced people can get involved. And we're not sure what that's going to look like yet, but there will be other ways. Um, it might be something like writing a review or um, taking part in a, um, an interview or something. We're not sure yet. That's still under discussion because... Uh, the archive is in its infancy. It's literally being built as as, as we speak. Um, and, of course, it will be a boon to edu educationalists and researchers. Uh, you know, they'll be able to look at uh, uh, research projects around them. I was wondering, uh, Rosie and Dee, if, though, before we start talking about the archive itself, <clears throat> There'll be a lot of people who will be watching and listening to this uh, who will be wondering <clears throat> the basics, which are, you know, what constitutes a care experience, because my understanding of that is that it can be quite broad. So I'm wondering if both of you can discuss just briefly what a, what a care experience is. 
We've decided okay. for the archive to take a broad def definition. I should say that in Australia, care experience is not as um, a popular term as it is in the UK. I quite liked it because it indicates that you come out of the system of supposed care for children, um, but that, that experience doesn't actually um, leave you. So it recognises that. So in Australia, we often talk about care leavers, but often, you know, the, the care part of that, which is contentious, very contentious here, because uh, so many people don't feel as if they were cared for. But I guess we're thinking about the care system uh, when we're using that language. But we've also taken a broad um, view of that, that some people are, are in care because that's organised by their families um, and some people are in care because that's organised by the state. So we've included both of those groups rather than restrict it to, say, to state care. Yeah. What do you and, want and, to add to that, so, I was going to say they call it kinship care in this country, don't they? If you're looked after by your grandmother or an auntie or a cousin or whatever, um, yeah, so we've got residential care, that's the old-fashioned children's home, foster care, but we're also including adoption, aren't we? Um, yes, yes, we did decide to do that, yes. Yeah, so adoption, even from birth, we've decided to do, to do that as well. Yeah. I guess when it comes, we, when we've finalised it, we've said if somebody has been adopted by their stepfather but they're still living with mum, then they're not included in the archive. But if they've been adopted by from birth then they're included in the archive. So is it is it fair to say that basically you're saying that if someone has grown up for some of their childhood <clears throat> apart from their biological parents and that fit into your categories? Absolutely. That's correct. And, and we haven't decided on a particular time, amount of time that people have been in care either. Sometimes when I've read stories, there's an African-American writer by the name of Richard Wright, for example, and he doesn't know how long he was in kinship care for or in an orphanage for. It might have been a week or something, but it had the most incredible impact on him. So he's included, even though none of us know for how long that was. It might have been, you know, a week, 12 months. He doesn't know. So we think so we don't make those sorts of things. If it has an impact on somebody, then we include it, um, include them in the archive. Can you can you then describe for everybody um, what a uh, what an archive what an archive is, and particularly, I guess, what your archive is. Mm. It, yeah, it's a collection. <laughs> it's a collection of material. Ours is a digital archive, so it's all online. Uh, so we're de developing a website so that you we've got various categories, which I'll get Rosie to talk about in a moment. So you go onto the website and then you'll be able to find things like books that have been written by care experience writers or books that feature care experience characters, um, whether they're those awful ones that Rosie was telling us about that sort of stereotype or whether they're more the sort of Anne of Green Gables 19th century stories which are a little bit more positive and a bit more sympathetic. So an archive is simply a collection of material. Ours is digital, it's all online. Um, and then we've got ways that you can get into that archive via the website. Do you want to yeah, add to that? I, so, I, sorry, Rosie, go ahead. I was just going to say for me, um, also, an archive is about protection. Um, it's about protecting um, those books. Okay, so we're not, we don't have an actual physical collection yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, D and I have got our, 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 our own little mini libraries. Um, but yeah, it's about putting um, all of those it's about bringing everything together and uh, putting it in a place where we can actually say, okay, guys, have a look at this and uh, have your minds absolutely blown. <laughs> uh, because I, I, I think once it's um, finished and live and people see the amount of um, literature that's out there, they will be absolutely amazed. And can you explain just a little bit about what would that lit literature would comprise of um you know so you've talked about okay. some, some some writers 
Um, but you're not talking about just written literature, are you? You're talking about other, no. other forms of um, expression as well, I guess. We are. We're talking about films, plays, podcasts, websites, um, blogs. Um, we're talking about behind the scenes as well. So uh, directors, um, the runners, production assistants. And that's actually one area that... Uh, we at the moment we don't have that much in there so if anybody knows of any directors um, or pe just people that have worked behind the scenes in film or theater that have um, got care experience then please do let us know um, and I I think the other thing is um, that in terms of our our, our, our world view we want to, um, at the moment, you know, we've got a lot from the UK, Australia and America, uh, but we want to actually include the whole world. So um, we're hoping that care experienced people from all around the world will get involved and say, um, you know, oh, please include this book and or this book or this film. Um, yeah, so. But that, when you think about it, though, that's quite massive, Rosie, isn't it? Because you think of countries like China, India, Africa, you know, who also have definitions of what a care experience is, I hasten to add. So how do you, are you prepared to deal with the volume of work that that might create? Well, I think the other thing that we're hoping is that more care experience people will get involved and it will become a collective um, project um, so, for example, I mean, uh, I was speaking to Jamie Crabb earlier this week, who's just set up um, a solidarity, not charity organization. And there's quite a few young uh, care experienced people involved in that. And, you know, they're working as a team. So that's what we're hoping that there will be more um, care experienced people getting involved um, and who will be able to take on some of the work as well. So you might you might have to define it in terms of countries or regions or something like that too, I guess perhaps maybe. Um, what are so um, so the, one of the other questions I've got here is why, um, and it's a really important question I think, is what's motivating you both to to just do this project in the first place. <laughs> It's a good, it's a good question. So I guess I'm motivated. Um, I'm motivated by what I said before that I'm so over that one story about care experience people being told. I'm just so over it. I can't. I can't say that vehemently enough. And so part of what is motivating me is to change change the story so that we have lots and lots of stories. We will have care experience people who've done some awful things. And I've been reading about some of those recently, actually. Um, and we will have some who are very prominent people in the community and we'll have everybody else in between. And I wanted us to have all of those stories told, not just one type of story, not just either the you know super prominent person or this the, what I might call the super villain so not those sort of stories but but all of those in between so I'm um, so that's part of my motivation I guess another part of my motivation is that I love to read and um, I love to watch television so I watch a lot of movies and television shows so um, so it's interesting to me to see these representations of people and I'm kind of also curious about how often the fact that they care experienced people are in the story is not told in a synopsis of a movie or or anything like that so it's kind of like there's another aspect of the story that's not being told either i remember for example um when somebody was writing about P.G. Wodehouse, I think it was, and they were writing about his stories but never mentioned his care experience background, and that happens so frequently. Mm -hmm. Frequently I find that a little bit infuriating as well. So in that sense we become invisible and I wanted to make us more visible. So, so I guess that's kind of three things that motivate me. And, um, uh, Rosie? Yes, well... I, I would agree with what Dee's just said. I'm, I'm motivated by changing the narrative, absolutely. And um, 
uh, also, you know, the PhD work that I've done, this is, um, it's a, a, an accompaniment, if you like, to, to that. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I was so busy listening to Dee, I, I wasn't really thinking about what motivates me. Uh, I think a love of reading. Ah, yes. When I was, when I was growing up in uh, some rather um, chaotic times, uh, it was my ability to be able to read from a very young age uh, that meant that I could escape that chaos and madness that was going on around me. And um, I found a safe place within the um, books that I was reading. And also libraries um, uh, were, were another safe place for me. Librarians always tended to be very helpful and, uh, you know, would... Um, give you a place to sit a safe place to sit so that's another motivation for me that you love of reading but also the fact that reading without without reading and libraries i i really don't think i would have been here today they really did save my life and so i'm sharing that um love if you like with other people and i'm also saying you know you don't have to feel so alone when you're in the care system, because there's a lot of characters out there that you can get to know, um, and uh, you know they'll help you along. They'll help you um, on along on your journey. Do you do you think it's important for people to to talk about their experiences in care as well? And, and is that sort of an, a, a category within the archival system that you'll be investigating? That's a very large category, <laughs> actually. There has been, since the 1990s, um, a trend in publishing for not just people with care experience, but for lots of people with difficult childhoods to be writing memoirs and autobiographies. And so in amongst that, um, that literature trend, uh, are plenty of people who have care experience as well. So we do have that as a category. And as I said, it's quite a large category. And I do think it is important. it's important for, you know, if people want to write their story I absolutely support them in doing that I think that's a really important thing I do remember um, something that the American writer Henry Miller said about writing it out of your writing the poison out of your system and that was something that really resonates with me that in writing I've cried and I've sobbed and I've relived and I've grieved um, and it's helped me to process experiences so that's why I'm very supportive of people writing about their experiences or performing it there's a comedians who who um get people to laugh. I'm thinking about Corey, Wright, or Corey White in Australia who has us laughing about his time in foster care, which is almost horrifying to think about because he did not have a fun time. So it's quite a clever thing that he does. Um, but that's another form of expression as in as is writing songs and poetry. So, yeah, I'm totally supportive of that. Will people also have the opportunity to <clears throat> record their stories or video them talking about their stories and for you to archive that sort of work as well i i i think that's a, another quite huge project actually tony um and at this stage who knows i mean maybe somebody could get some funding and and do that as well it would be wonderful to have that um at the moment, we don't have plans to do that. Uh, but we are discussing ways to... So, for example, um, Alan Dupree contacted us the other day and said, oh, you know, can I upload my poems? And we hadn't thought about that. Um, and, you know, that, again, is something that we have to discuss. Um, are, are we going to have a, a an area in the archive where people can upload their uh, poetry or writing. Um, I, guess, I guess my question is basically: Are you are you somehow a repository for those people that have had care experiences <clears throat> to express those care experiences and what they were like? Um, okay, so what we are um, we are an archive that is. 
uh, collecting rep the representations of, of care experience. Um, and what you're asking is, are we going to offer that service? And I can't answer that, Tony, because we, we don't know where this um, archive will end up. It might be that somebody decides to do something like that and, in and, and include it in the archive. But we don't have that facility at the moment. We're collecting everything that is online or has an ISBN number or is a person, you know, who uh, is involved with theatre or um, film, um, that sort of thing. You know, actors, uh, Marilyn Monroe being a, a very famous um, person that was in foster care. Yeah, yeah. OK, just wanted to clarify. Just wanted to just wanted to clarify that, folks. So I'm glad we've done so. So I just want to finish with: um, can people can people send their suggestions to you? Like, like hopefully this conversation will encourage people to think about maybe their own experiences. They'll think about people they know, and they'll be wondering about whether they've had a care experience at all. Um, so how can people go about doing that? Yeah, absolutely. We'd love for people to be involved and to send us their collections. And we've had already a couple of examples of that. Um, so the email address is Rosie. I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, it's care experience and culture at gmail.com. Gmail. Yeah. So, um, so all one word care experience and culture at gmail.com but and please do do let us know about um you know your suggestions people that you think that should be included uh suggestions of books that should be included films if you noticed episodes of television shows then absolutely let us know about those that would be really good oh, yeah and, and we're also uh, on twitter sorry. we're also on twitter at Care experience, uh, care, care exp underscore culture. Right. Okay. And they and and I guess people could uh, could track either of you down too and get and send you information yeah. or have a discussion absolutely. with you at least. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. And then before we finish, we, Rosie mentioned the funding if we were to take the project further on, but we should mention that we have had funding to date um, from the Welland Trust in the UK. So we've been very fortunate to have that funding to, to be able to take this idea that we had and actually bring it to fruition. And we'll be doing a launch of the um, of the whole project. So we'll be doing a look-see at it on the 11th of March and then an actual launch on the 11th of april which will coincide with care experience history month which is which is very cool very so between between now and then what would you like people to do what would be the things that you think would be helpful in order to get this off further off the ground and to get people involved i think as Dee just said um if they know of uh, a book a novel a film um a person who's got care experience um, and also, actually, we haven't mentioned academic material. Uh, but, Family, yeah. strangely. <laughs> well, yeah. um, you know, blog posts that they know of, web pages, um, about the representation of care experience, then, then, yeah, absolutely, do let us know. Okay, so just before we do go... Um, is there just some some final thought that either of you would like to have? And I'll start with you, Dee. Um, a, a thought about a message that you'd like to give people that would just sum up this total project. Um, okay, so I would like to say, do get involved, please. We'd love to hear your suggestions. Um, we think it's a marvellous project. I really liked what Rosie said, that we've got a collection, but it's also a way of um, protecting material, bringing it all together into the one place. I think it's also an opportunity, what I've been thinking about is that it's an opportunity for care experienced people who have experienced disruption, and some of us have almost no connection with bio 
biological family at all. So in a sense, no roots. It kind of gives us um, a larger family um, to be associated with and some heritage because care experience writers and uh, films and fiction go back quite a long way. So there's there's been a large pool of material that we all are connected to, not just care experience people, but the larger community as well. So I think that for care experience people, there's an opportunity there to, to have some heritage that we might not have thought about before mm. and to be proud of that heritage. Absolutely. And, and Rosie, for you, what final thoughts would you like to offer? Um, I think Dee said it all, really. Um, um, I think I'll I'll just end by saying that um, yeah, you know, a, a, as I said earlier, um, if if they know of a um, a book or an autobiography or nonfiction or academic material or a film or actors or people that work behind the scenes, absolutely let us know. Um, but also um, to bear in mind that within this archive, there's something for everyone. Um, you know, whatever your um, interest in uh, literature or uh, film, um, yeah, or um, academia, um, stuff online, uh, there, there will be something for everyone. You know, if you're a, a teacher, you, you'll be able to use it as a resource. If you're a social worker, you'll also be able to use it as a resource and maybe, um, you know, recommend something to somebody that you're working with. Um, I mean, there's too many people to include, but I, I just feel that there will be something for everyone in the archive. Okay. So I just want to finally thank both of you for being with us today uh, to be able to share these ideas. I think it's an exciting project and I'm sure that it will be extremely successful. And I guess, like most projects, the more people that are involved uh, will ensure its success. So just want to say thank you guys for being here. It was great to talk to you. And thanks, Rosie, for getting up so early <laughs> and not presenting us in front of the camera with your pyjamas on. I think that we're, we're most grateful for that. Um, and uh, just take care, both of you, and uh, and and be safe and for anybody that has any issues in relation to anything that might have been discussed today i would suggest that you contact someone at the child protection party so thanks everybody for being with us take care look after yourselves and be safe <laughs> <laughs>